What's up everybody? I'm here in a new place mm -hmm. as you can see. This is Media Lab. This is where Kyle That's came to, uh, to fulfill his dream of... What is your dream again? Um, I, you know, I'm hoping to become a real boy someday, but also of having a collaborative workspace for video creators, podcasters here in Calgary. Why are we here? Why is Kyle here? Why am I hanging out at Media Lab? Well, we had this little challenge we cooked up uh, between the two of us. We would pick a movie or a, a pick of three movies that we would have to pick to watch and, um, and talk about it. Now, I picked a uh, South Korean film, The Yellow Sea. I've talked about this film here in the channel before. A great movie. We went over to his channel to talk about it. That's right. And now we're back on my channel to talk about a Canadian film, the one I picked out of his list of movies, which is called Way Downtown. That's was correct. shot here in Calgary, actually. In Calgary, that's Not right. far from where we are sitting right now. You know, it's a pretty big deal. So. What made you, you know, choose that movie for me? So here was my, my, uh, the reason why I decided to pick that movie is that each of the three picks that I gave to you, I think are somewhat weird and offbeat in some way. There's and a couple musicals, there right? Couple it was Singing in the I Rain, um, yeah. Way Downtown, and what was the third one? The Phantom of the Paradise, yes. which you absolutely should check out at some point. Be that as it may, I, when I was at university many years ago, like literally 30 years ago, that's not true, uh, <laughs> I took this course called Canadian Film, and I was introduced to a lot of the different directors that are here in Canada, a lot of the different actors and writers and that sort of thing, and I was also shown just a whole bunch of Canadian film, and I feel that for those of us who live here in Canada, we are so inundated with U.S. and American media that we sometimes or often don't support our own homegrown talent. Or forget that you actually have some good films coming out of Canada. Correct, yeah. And now there is absolutely <laughs> the jokes that are made about like Canadian films. And a lot of them are kind of justified in many ways. But I love talking about them because I think there is, there is a Canadian cinema that happens. We just don't really talk about it a whole lot. Now, <clears throat> you told me that one thing that you like about the film is that you can tell that it is Canadian. Oh yeah. <laughs> I couldn't. I honestly couldn't tell. I, it was devoid of stereotypes or or like uh, or the vocabulary or the 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 accent. Yeah, you right, can't really, I, see. I couldn't really place that they were Canadian actors or that was well, you know shot in Canada. See that this illustrates my point in a way because if you watch a lot of Canadian films, the and this is actually true for Canadian literature as well. Again, English major, so I did a lot of this in university. Is that the constant uh, debate that happens in Canada is what is Canadian or what makes us Canadian and oftentimes it's uh, it's stories about uh, trying to fit in or trying to um, distance ourselves from America or, or uh, hiding out between like documentary and, and, and comedy there there is uh, yeah there's this quest to like try and figure out what is Canada what is Canadian and I think that this movie illustrates that in, in a way because it follows a lot of the different tropes of Canadian films. It follows a lot of different actors that are in a bunch of Canadian films. Uh, so if you know that kind of history going into it, I think it kind it of feels crazy. Canadian. It yes. feels Canadian. As a little, you know, with virgin eyes, it, yeah. it, it could be, you know, might as well be said in the States because I thought that it wasn't very characteristic of Canada. Now, right. the plot of the movie, what the movie is about. The movie is about a bet between four friends that work in an office building here in Calgary to not leave the office or the area around it, which is the, the, the entire downtown here in Calgary is connected by these walkways, right? So they have this bet, whoever can stay in for the longest wins one month's salary, which is something like $10,000 after they Correct. pull in the, the money. It's an interesting bet. I mean, if you live in the downtown core, if you happen to be in the same kind of, kind of situation they were in, that they all lived in the downtown core, you could pretty much not step foot outside. Yeah, I mean, there's a few other cities, I think, in the world that have the same sort of idea. Minneapolis is one I know off the top of my head. But Calgary, yeah, it does have this this huge network of systems, which is kind of a, an allegory or a metaphor that is used throughout the film of like this ant farm that they keep going yes. to. Yes. It's kind of the same concept, right? It's like, you can never go outside because you have food or access to uh, entertainment, you have access to your home, all of Your never job is right job. there, right? The main thing. So you can just live there. Now, the movie is, it's like 
a true statement of the 90s. It's like it's like mall rats. If I had to describe it, I would describe it as being, as being mall rats with uh, a little bit of office space, right? For me, honestly, it's, it is really that combination of like office space, but also like the British version of the office a little bit kind of melded the together. The color scheme, and I guess the way it was shot, reminded me of the British version of the office a lot. It's narrated by the main character, and he's constantly talking about how he's just basically had enough. The bet has made him realize that it's not just uh, the bet that makes him just be kind of herd like cattle it's like it's just the life of of an office worker is just seeing the same people going to the same cubicle uh saying hello but not really mean it just kind of acting like a zombie it was like a rant in a movie right yeah. for the office workers of today or of 99. yeah i think you're, you're right in saying like and we've said it off camera about how this does feel very much like a 1990s film or late 1990s film because that's really what they're concerned with is the, those types of ideas of like I'm in this rat race I'm, I'm going to this jury job it is taking it came after office space was released um, and I don't know necessarily that this would be kind of the same film that was made now I think we all have a slightly different problems nowadays yes of, of not being fulfilled and stuff like that but definitely this is like 100% on track for a lot of those comedies that came out in the late 90s the movie is also shot with a lot of close-ups which makes us, the viewers, feel very claustrophobic. Like it makes us feel like the character. So you kind of, you kind of start cheering them on. Just go outside. Just go outside because you also could use a break from uh, the coffee shops that are in the background, from like you know the, the office backdrop and the mall backdrop that they're kind of just wandering around. Um, so I like that. I always like a movie using. Um, you know, cinematography techniques to make you feel like the characters feel at that given yeah. time. Yeah, and they're still using that handheld style, so there's a lot of like kind of the shaky camera uh, thing going on. Also, for me, it's kind of a, just a really weird film. As much as this sounds like a, a standard comedy that you would have seen at, at any time, there is just this undercurrent of like there's something off about <laughs> about this it's like train spotting yeah like that's that's the other comparison that i wanted to to make it's like mall rats because of the humor and it's mm -hmm. kind of raw and it's edgy is uh office space because they're they're kind of ranting about the like everyday life of the nine to five grind of showing up to a cubicle and hating your life they even have the the stereotypical character that it would be the menace of the office the one that right. you're kind of afraid of We'll get into it a little bit more um, <clears throat> later on, but the thing, the thing that bugged me about the film, um, and it's just a technical uh, kind of standpoint, the continuity. I didn't get what they were doing with the continuity of the film. Like the, the shirt color. The shirt yeah. colors kept changing, so I thought that for a second I even forgot that the movie takes place during just a one-hour lunch break. I figured like, oh, maybe that, that's because it's been a week, and then I had to remind myself, no, this is, takes place between an hour, right? Right. Um, so that kind of, it's when you see continuity mistakes and that blatant, you kind of it kind of takes you off a little bit or reminds you that hey, this is a film and they made a mistake here. Um, for the majority of the shots, this usually happens mostly with the main character. He has uh, like a dress shirt and a tie set up that keeps changing all the time. Yeah. There is one change when one of the characters finally decides to call it quits and step outside and breathe the fresh air she so desperately needs. Um, they change their, her shirt within the cut of her breathing. It was like, I just, I didn't understand why they would do that. I'm guessing because limitations of the days that they could shoot outside, shooting in, like downtown can be complicated, I guess. I have a different interpretation of that. Okay. I, I honestly think I'm what they're trying to, to do. <laughs> I honestly think what they're trying to do, because I don't think it's a continuity mistake. I think they were very intentionally making him change his shirt color. I think what they're trying to do is throw the audience off guard is they're trying to get you inside of those characters heads to such a degree that you are getting frantic because i think it is it becomes very obvious unless you're really not paying attention to yes. lot, that those shirt colors and things are changing hairstyles are even changing between shots and so they're trying to make you be like a little bit like on edge because like oh this is like messing with my mind a little bit yeah, I can see that, I can, especially because I don't think I noticed that until later on in the film, which it becomes even more predominant. It's just sure. like every time he leaves and there's a different cut sometimes, it's just like, boom, there's a different shirt. Mm -hmm. There's a different tie right there. That's right. So um, I, can, I can see that because I can, 
it, because it, it definitely bugged me about it. Sure, so if yeah, that yeah. was the point of it, congratulations, Ray Downtown. The other thing that you have to say, though, at, at a certain point is that it still bugged you. <laughs> so it, 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 that's still valid to, yeah, to bring up. exactly. I mentioned one of the characters uh, in the film. He plays the kind of overworked, depressed uh, office worker, while well, they are all kind of like that. But this mm -hmm. guy is just kind of the stereotypical, we don't talk to that guy because he might shoot up right. the whole place. He felt very menacing. Uh, sometimes you watch a movie and although you don't, you don't, you know, draw a lot from the film, right? There's always some performances, no right. matter how minor they are, that really kind of take you in, I think, and he did. I would love to see more of that character play kind of a more uh, an erratic person, like yeah. a serial killer or or somebody you don't trust. His voice, everything about him, kind of screamed out. You know, this guy could play a great. This is the next Hannibal Lecter, right? Yeah. But that guy, that actor, his name is Don McKellar, and he is I'll call a Canadian famous in that okay. in the right circles, people were like, oh, absolutely, I know who Don. McKellar I know that guy. I know that guy. Uh, he started at a theater company in Toronto. He's he's done a lot of acting inside of films and TV shows here in Canada. So uh, a writer, director, got the chops. stuff like yeah. that. So, but he's done serious comedic. He's done a bunch of other. It's stuff. It's funny because I, I have not. I've never seen him. I'm, I'm assuming actor. it was this is still like local as in Canada. He, okay. I so would say so. Not I'm a lot of productions sure. outside, like Hollywood productions. I have to check his IMDb. I think maybe the the biggest thing of why I thought you should take a look at it, a filmed in Calgary. So that's kind of an interesting uh, thing in and yeah. of itself because it's not a city necessarily that we film inside. We film a lot in the outdoors around Calgary. A lot yeah. of films are filmed the there, like Okotoks. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff shot there. But not something like within the city itself. And I, I do think that as, as um, low production value, I would say that it is, I still think that those performances are good enough to warrant it to be talked about a little bit more. If you like, you know, late 90s, uh, the comedies, raunchy comedies like that, it's a movie for you, that's for sure. It's not very long. Yeah, it's easy um, to watch. It's just it's straight to the point. Um, give it a try. So that's it for mine and Kyle's collab. Yeah. This year. Single tier. Well, we'll, we'll do more. Yeah, we'll that's do, right. We'll do some more. There's plenty of movies out there to talk about. Plenty more discussions to have. That's right. Um, We're on the road to a thousand right on now. On the road to a thousand. Have you heard? I'm not making any money. I wasn't anyways. <laughs> that's right, but now that's right. I'm really not making any money. <laughs> so, I'll catch you guys next time. You should check out Kyle's channel, actually. I'm going to... Here's your 20 seconds. Your Perfect. elevator pitch, if you will. I'm a, I'm a usually a vlogger. I do some other like short films, things on the top of my head, that sort of thing. Uh, YouTube.com slash Kyle Marshall Tries is the quickest way to get to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. I will too. I'm weirdly always on the other side of this camera. You just never see me. Yeah. It's, it's a, the, the troubles of being a director, huh? I know. Nobody knows your face. <laughs> Nobody knows your face.